How's it going everybody? My name is Lucky Buns, and in today's video we're going to be covering the best Pokemon you can power up in Pokemon Go in 2024. Now this list is focused on the best raid attackers and gym attackers in the game with the exclusion of Shadow Pokemon and PvP Pokemon, as they're going to be covered in a separate video. Now I will be covering Master League relevance for dual functionality Pokemon though, so if a Pokemon is both meta relevant in raid slash gyms as well as PvP, well then that propels it to the top of the list in terms of worthy investments. Now those Pokemon are going to be spread out throughout this video, so make sure that you guys watch this one all the way through or you might end up missing something really really good. Now before we actually get started with the top list of Pokemon that are going to be worth powering up, we're going to go over some fundamentals and basics, but there are going to be timestamps linked down below, so feel free to skip ahead to that list right now if you want to. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to talk about are going to be Mega Pokemon, which yes, they are going to be included in this video. Many of the top picks will also fall into this category, so for those unfamiliar, I feel like I should go over this. You can only have one active Mega Evolution at a time. These Pokemon also require Mega Energy from raids initially to Mega Evolution, Evolve, but after Mega Evolving them for the first time, the cost to Mega Evolve is then reduced by 80%. Afterwards, you're going to gain the ability to earn Mega Energy from walking with your buddy, and you're also going to get access to a cooldown period between your next free Mega Evolution. This starts at 7 days and progressively goes down to 3 days as you continue to level up your Mega. Now on that note, there are going to be 3 levels for Mega Evolution, with Mega Level 3 being the final stage. Now at Mega Level 3, guys, you're going to get amazing candy and extra large candy bonuses when you catch Pokemon. This will help you accumulate these resources significantly faster. Faster. This will take about 30 days of Mega Evolution to reach Mega Level 3. Now with that being said, I do also want to establish a baseline for these Pokemon that I'm about to recommend, as there's going to be a wide range of them, right? Like level 30, level 40, level 50. Some of you guys might not even know like what a Pokemon level actually is. So first of all, what is the baseline that I'm going to recommend? So level 30 is my baseline that I always recommend in videos, that is like the most cost efficient way to get powerful Pokemon in game. So level 30 is 90% of a Pokemon's maximum potential up to level 40. This is without considering level 50 Pokemon. I consider anything above level 40 to basically be like over leveling, but I will be talking about Pokemon levels above level 40 in this video as well. Just keep that in mind, level 30 is my strongest recommendation, anything above that I'll let you know. Now a good example of something that we might go over in this video is how a level 30 Reshiram does the same damage as a level 50 Chandelier. Understanding this kind of data can really put things into perspective when it comes down to investing Stardust. Now of course, I'm sure some of you guys are wondering, how can you actually tell what a Pokemon level is? So to keep things simple, you can tell by the Stardust required to power up your Pokemon. For example, when a Pokemon is hatched or caught from raid battles, it is going to be at level 20, requiring 2500 Stardust to power them up. Now if that raid Pokemon was weather boosted, it'll actually be at level 25, which will require 4000 Stardust to power it up. Now level 30, which is the baseline that I'm recommending, is going to require 5000 Stardust to power it up, and if you're high enough level in game, you can actually catch all the way up to level 35 Pokemon in the wild when they are weather boosted. Now I feel like I have to reiterate this one more time, but for those of you guys who don't know, Oh, these are going to be the best Pokemon in the game, which means that they may not be the most accessible Pokemon. If you guys actually want a video that goes over more accessible Pokemon to power up, I'm going to leave a link to one right here in the top right hand corner. Anyways, that's basically going to cover all the basics I feel like you guys need to know for this video. As always, if you guys have any additional questions, let me know in the comment section down below. But with that being said, I think it's time we get into the featured Pokemon. Let's start off with Mega Charizard Y and actually Mega Blaziken at the same time. So these two Pokemon have remained the number one fire type attackers in the game for like the last few years, right? So Mega Charizard Y, Mega Blaziken, I strongly recommend powering up both of these, or maybe just one or the other, to level 50. When it comes down to fire type attackers, you really can't go wrong with either of these two. Fire Spin plus Blast Burn are going to be the recommended movesets. Now Blast Burn is going to be a Calm Day exclusive moveset, which means that you have to use an Elite Charge Tam in order to get it. That being said though, if you guys end up getting a hundo for either of these two, absolutely worth it. Get these two to level 50, that is my recommendation right there. They're probably not going to get outclassed for a very long time, if ever. Now Mega Pokemon aside though, what's our next best recommendation when it comes down to fire type attackers? So Reshiram with Fire Fang plus Fusion Flare. Fusion Flare is going to be a signature move, which means that again, you have to use an Elite Charge Team in order to get it. Uh, that Pokemon is going to be the next best. If you want an even crazier perspective on why Reshiram at level 30 is so good, for those of you guys in the old days who powered up your Moltres, like a level 50 Moltres, guys, is as good as a level 30 Reshiram. Reshiram is the top dog. If you're able to get it, then seriously, you have one of the best fire type attackers in the game. This thing absolutely needs to get powered up. Now, unfortunately, our next Pokemon is going to be much lower, and that is going to be Heatran, which recently got access to Magma Storm. Before Magma Storm, it was like one of the fire type attackers you kind of forgot about. But nowadays, Heatran is actually pretty good. Now, we do actually have one more Pokemon in the fire type category that I am going to talk about. This one barely makes the cut here, and we're going to talk about 
about a shadow variant in the other video, but that Pokemon is actually going to be Purified Ho-Oh with the exclusive moveset Sacred Fire++. Now the only way to get this guys, the only way to get this is if you actually paid for the Johto Tour event, or maybe you got the ticket gifted to you, and uh, you purified your Apex Shadow Ho-Oh to get Sacred Fire++. Now in PvP this doesn't change anything, right? It's still just going to run it as a normal Sacred Fire moveset, but in the Raid slash Gym meta, Sacred Fire++ actually ranks it pretty well. Now unfortunately compared to a level 30 Reshiram, you're going to have to power up this bad boy to level 45, which can cost a lot of Stardust. A lot less than the Shadow would, but still. That being said though, Ho-Oh also does benefit from Master League relevance, so again, another dual functionality Pokemon. Actually, all three of the Pokemon that I just mentioned outside of the Megas do have dual functionality in the Master League, which is pretty nice. So if you want a level 50 any of these guys, like if you got like a really good IV spread, you can totally do that. They're going to stay relevant, and yeah, it's actually pretty nice. So fire types out of the way, let's move on over to our grass type category, starting off with Mega Sceptile. So Mega Sceptile, another banger of a Pokemon, guys. Bullet Seed plus Frenzy Plant is going to be the ideal moveset that you want to have on it. Similar to uh, Blaziken as well as Charizard, Frenzy Plant is going to be a Calm Day exclusive moveset, so you're going to need to have an Elite Charge Tam ready to go on that one if you don't already have it on your Sceptile, but definitely is worth uh, getting that bad boy up to level 50. Now, unfortunately, though, Sceptile does not have any Master League relevance, so this will mainly just be for the Raid slash Gym meta. Now, Kartana is still the reigning champion, uh, even above the uh, shadow Pokemon. There's nothing better in the grass type category that is just better than Kartana. So level 30 Kartana, that's going to be your MVP. That's basically all that you need. Now following Kartana, Shaman in a Sky form with Magical Leaf and Grass Knot. I believe Magical Leaf is an exclusive move set in a weird way because you can't actually get it on all of your Shaman. Now unfortunately, according to this Reddit post, a Magical Leaf is actually bugged. So if you guys don't actually have Magical Leaf on your Shaman, that's most likely the reason why. I have no idea why it is. I don't know why Niantic hasn't fixed it. It by now but yeah um if you have magical leaf on your shaman that's a plus because at level 35 it is equivalent to about a level 30 kartana which again is actually still pretty good if i do say so myself now the same thing can be said for zarud as well and we're actually going to be having a zarud quest coming into pokemon go during the month of march which is pretty exciting obviously some of you guys are going to watch this video way past march but zarud with vine whip and power whip is going to be an mvp as well level 35 is going to be my recommendation there that is the equivalent to a level 30 kartana but Zarud also does benefit in the Open Master League. Now the downside here is that Zarud is a mythical Pokemon, so we've only been able to get like so many, which means that in order to actually get the extra large candy to power up this thing to level 50, you're gonna need to invest a ton of extra large rare candy, which I'm gonna guess most people do not have. I personally have not even got enough to do it for one single Pokemon, so I mean we're getting there. I have like a hundred right now in my inventory, but we're still quite a while away. Next up we got water type Pokemon, and there's really not too many in this list anymore, but the main two, or at least the main two megas and primals are gonna be be Primal Kyogre and Mega Swampert. I recommend powering up both of those two to level 50. Swampert does have some play in the Master League, especially the Master League Premier Cup. Primal Kyogre is just the overall powerhouse. Like between those two, Primal Kyogre, Mega Swampert, Primal Kyogre all the way. That is the MVP. That's pretty much all that you're going to need. But the downside here is that Primal Kyogre does need to have the exclusive moveset Origin Pulse, or signature moveset I should say. Mega Swampert as well needs to have the Calm Day exclusive moveset Hydro Cannon. Now what about the non-Megas though? So we recently got Shadow Kyogre into Pokemon Go a couple months ago, and that thing is of course going to be the best non-Mega uh, attacker to power up. But outside of that, like compared to Shadow Kyogre, how much do you have to power up the next best Pokemon? So that Pokemon is no surprise, it's going to be regular Kyogre, but in order to actually get it to the same power potential as a Shadow Kyogre at level 30, your regular Kyogre has to be at least at level 40. Now, keep in mind, guys, most people are not going to have, like, five Shadow Kyogre because the only way to get it is from Giovanni, so, you know, factoring that in mind, regular Kyogre is still very much to play just due to accessibility. Now, after regular Kyogre, though, at level 40, what's the next best option you guys can power up? Like, I only included this in this video because water was just really lacking outside of Shadow Kyogre, so the next best is Grey Ninja with Hydro Cannon at level 50. Yeah, you heard me right. Now this did have a calm day, so, you know, Great Ninja at level 50, that's uh, reasonable for some players who actually participated in that calm day, but for those who didn't, this one might be kind of tough. So basically what I'm trying to say here is that Kyogre is your MVP for the water type category. Not much has changed in that regard, and you know, we do have Kyogre coming up in raids here pretty soon. Maybe by the time you guys are watching this, that one already passed, but either way, anytime Kyogre comes back into rotation, guys, rate it for either the primal or just for the regular form. And then of course, when uh, we get Shadow Kyogre, 
Kyogre eventually into Shadow Raids, definitely make sure to raid that one as well. Now I'm sure I'm going to get this question asked a lot in this video as well. If you don't have the exclusive movesets, can you also run an alternate moveset? The answer is yes. So for example, if you guys don't have uh, Origin Pulse on your Kyogre, running Surf is the next best option. Once again, this is objectively the best Pokemon to power up in the game, so that's why I'm not going over a lot of these other alternate picks. Uh, we can go over these Pokemon more in my budget video, which will be released probably sometime in the middle of this year. Next up, let's talk about the Electric type category. So this one is actually pretty interesting because the top dog currently is Shadow Raikou, which is going to be available in raids during the month of March right now, which is definitely really exciting. Now this one is a little bit weird because Mega Manectric is technically the best Mega in this category, but it's not actually the best Pokemon in this category, right? Because Zerkatry and Zekrom are both going to be better than Mega Manectric. Shadow Raikou as well, obviously, but we're not going to talk about that one in this video. Um, when it comes down to overall power potential, at least my recommendations, Zerkatry and Zekrom, both at level 30, that's good enough. The next best option would be Thunderous in its Therian form with Wild Bolt Storm. That's going to be the new signature moveset for it, and that one would be level 35. Now, I forgot to mention this as well, but Zekrom also needs to have Fusion Bolt, which is a signature moveset. So, you know, factoring all that in, what's actually the best play here? Zerkatry, because Zerkatry does not need any exclusive movesets, and it's pretty much good to go. It's actually slightly better than Zekrom. Now, as far as where Zekrom actually does better than Zerkatry, if you power it up to level 50, it has Master League relevance, where Zerkatry does not. So Zekrom for that reason is actually slightly better than Zerkatry just because you get dual functionality out of it. Thunderous in its Therian form also has Master League relevance if you powered up to level 50 which is actually pretty cool as well. So those are going to be your top dogs for the Electrotype category. I personally love the Electrotype category. I feel like you have some great options in here. Zerkatry, Zekrom, and Thunderous. Those are all super cool Pokemon. Moving on to our next category we're going to talk about Poison type Pokemon. Now I've gotten a lot of people telling me to include Mega Gengar in this list for like the past few years so Mega Mega Gengar, your top dog. Now here's the thing, right, with Mega Gengar, and maybe just in comparison to all the other poison types in game currently, but Mega Gengar, with Shadow Claw that's not even a stab for poison types, but Shadow Claw plus Sludge Bomb does extremely well in this category. So Mega Gengar and Mega Beedrill are going to be your top dogs. I will recommend to power up both of them to level 50 if you just want to have a pure poison type attacker or possibly even just the Gengar for dual functionality, because you could also run Gengar as a really good ghost type attacker, but we'll talk about that one later on. Now when it comes down to Master League relevance, there is no Master League relevance for either of these two, but again the reason why I recommend these Megas at level 50 is because you're also going to give additional bonuses to your surrounding teammates when you're going through raid battles. Now what about our non-Mega category? Well we only really have one Pokemon in the Poison type category now that pretty much is your go-to, like I wouldn't recommend powering up anything else except for Nileego. So Nileego at level 30, and it could also be used in the Master League as well so there's dual functionality here as well, but Nileego at level 30 is better than a level 40 Roserade and a level 40 Shadow Toxicroak, a level 40 Shadow Victory Bell, and a level 40 Shadow Vileplume. Level 30, regular Nileego that you can totally lucky trade is better than all those Pokemon I just mentioned. So that's really the only one that you want to go for. Oh man, we got some big updates for the flying type category. All right, so let's get into this one right now. So of course, the number one flying type attacker, guys, Mega Rayquaza with Air Slash and Dragon Ascent. Dragon Ascent is a signature move, but you can only get Dragon Ascent if you use a Meteorite on your Rayquaza to get that specific move set. Those were extremely hard to get. You were guaranteed to get at least one, I think maybe even two, from the uh, special research during GoFest last year, but the only other way to get them was from Raid Battles. And I actually knew one person who did get it, but for the most part, almost everybody else did not get a Meteorite. So those things are extremely rare. But once I'm done talking about Rayquaza, you're going to understand why you really, really want to have as many of these as possible. And purely just looking at the stats, Mega Rayquaza's ER at level 40 is 70.67. Now, I know you guys don't look at the numbers a lot, but trust me when I say this, that is miles above everything else in game. So just as like a generalist attacker, Mega Rayquaza is the guy. Now for those of you guys who've been watching my videos for a long time, you know that Shadow Moltres was the top dog in this category for years, like literal years. But then we got Rayquaza with Dragon Ascent, and now that thing is 5 points higher than Shadow Moltres at level 30. Now Shadow Moltres is still going to be a recommendation, I mean sorta, in the next video, but you know, Rayquaza with Dragon Ascent, there's a reason that almost nothing else can compare to it. Now the only other alternate moveset for Rayquaza would be Hurricane, which is like 10 points lower than Dragon Ascent. So yeah, it's like the top dog, but it's also 
extremely unaccessible. <laughs> so what about the next best option, right? Well, your next best option, non-Shadow, non-Mega, is going to be Yveltal with Gust plus Oblivion Wing. Oblivion Wing was a signature moveset, so again, you're gonna need to use an Elite Charge Tam. It's kind of repetitive at this video at this point, but for the best Pokemon in the game, guys, there is a reason why you need to have so many Elite Charge Tams ready to go, or you potentially rated them. Either way, Yveltal compared to a level 30 Rayquaza, that's unfortunately level 45. So level 45, they're going to do the same damage. Um, but again, guys, like the accessibility for Rayquaza with Dragon Ascent, it's so difficult to get. So really, when it comes down to it, a level 30 Yveltal, that's more than fine. Not to mention Rayquaza and Yveltal both have Master League relevance. Rayquaza a little bit less now because Breaking Swipe did get nerfed, but I would still recommend powering up this bad boy to level 50 because you can still use it as a mega. Like I would say uh, either Dragon Tail plus Dragon Ascent and and then Breaking Swipe would be the ideal moveset, or potentially Air Slash plus Dragon Ascend, and then Breaking Swipe, possibly even Outrage if you want to go that route. Breaking Swipe isn't as good anymore, which is a bit unfortunate because I did Elite TM for that, but hey, it is what it is. The Flying Type category, man, the landscape for that has just changed so much, but let's move on over to our next category, which is going to be Ghost Type Pokemon. So we talked about Mega Gengar earlier, so the ideal moveset you want to have is either going to be Shadow Claw or Lick plus Shadow Ball to run it as a Ghost Type Attacker. Now you could totally double move your Gengar, guys, get it with uh, Shadow Shadow Claw plus Shadow Ball and then Sludge Bomb and then you could run it as both a Ghost type attacker as well as a Poison type attacker in the Raid Slash Gym meta. That's personally what I did, getting dual functionality out of that is just fantastic. Now what about our non-Mega non-Shadow options, right? What's the next best that we got here? So Giratina Origin Form uh, with Shadow Force, actually not even required to get Shadow Force, it's not like it's that much better than Shadow Ball, so that's going to be its signature moveset, but at the same time, like you could still run Shadow Ball and get away with it, I feel like it's fine. It's still going to be the top dog here in terms of non-Mega non-Shadow. Now following that, we do actually have a new option though and that's going to be golden go so the only way to get golden go in game is from gimme ghoul chest which you have to transfer a pokemon or like a postcard or something like that into scarlet and violet then you get access to this satchel that'll spawn gimme ghoul for like the next 30 minutes it's kind of like a melton box just for a uh, scarlet and violet so golden go with hex and shadow ball is going to be the next best option but you're gonna have to power this thing up to level 40 in order for it to be on the same playing field as some of the shadow options at level 30. now chandelier is going to be the last one that makes a cut here and uh, chandelier at level 40 as well is pretty much going to be where you want to have it. Hex plus Shadow Ball. You don't actually need to have the Legacy moveset for Chandelure. I know some people might think that you need to have Poltergeist, but uh, not necessary. Anyways, uh, let's move on over to our Dark type category. So we only have three Pokemon here that I'm going to talk about. Uh, potentially even uh, four Pokemon here. The first one is of course going to be Mega Tyranitar. You know, Bite plus Brutal Swing. Brutal Swing was recently given to Tyranitar la sometime last year, and uh, this propelled it to the top, man. Like, Tyranitar got a huge buff getting access to Brutal Swing. Previously, it had Crunch, but like, with Brutal Swing, it went up like seven points. Now, outside of Mega Tyranitar, by the way, recommendation for that, level 50, for sure. Recommendation outside of that would be regular Tyranitar and regular Hydragon, both at level 45. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's kind of high. Why is uh, that so high? Well, that has a lot to do with Shadow Tyranitar, right? So this is a comparison to the best level 30 Pokemon, uh, non-Mega. So that, unfortunately, is going to be Shadow Tyranitar at level 30. We'll talk about that more in the other video. But uh, yeah, when it comes down to it, guys, Shadow Tyranitar is that good. So even when it comes down to these Dark-type Pokemon, I would level 30 them, but be very, very cautious about spending anything more than that. Now, I hate to sound like a broken record here, but the next Pokemon that we're about to talk about is the only relevant one in the Psychic-type category, and that's going to be Mewtwo. So we also have Shadow Mewtwo as well. Now I'm going to do the comparison right here guys. With Psy Strike, Shadow Mewtwo compared to regular Mewtwo. Shadow Mewtwo, you only need to get it to level 30, but the equivalent of that for regular Mewtwo is level 45. Yeah, I hate to say it, but it's just, it's true. Regular Mewtwo does not hold a candle compared to Shadow Mewtwo. Now the upside to regular Mewtwo is that it will benefit from a mega evolution in the future. So, you know, you could also run Mewtwo in the Master League, therefore Mewtwo at least powering up one to level 50, it does make sense. And, uh, you know, if you want to build a team of Mewtwo, well, I would actually just hold off on that. You can maybe power up, like, three, you know, get, you know, two of them to level 30, and then your best one to level 50 eventually for the Mega, and then also just for Master League. But the rest of those, you should save that candy for potentially Shadow Mewtwo. Shadow Mewtwo, MVP. Even if you have to Elite Team to get Psy Strike on every single one of them, it is totally worth it. Now, I'm not going to compare everything to Shadow Pokemon in this video. There's plenty of other categories where you just have really good non-Shadow options, and that is definitely going to be the case for the Bug-type category. 
So first up, let's go over the Mega option for the Bug type category, and that is going to be Mega Pinsir with Bug Bite and Excisor. Now, I want to warn you guys, we are going to get Mega Heracross at some point in the future, and that is going to be better than Mega Pinsir. Now, following that, though, what about our non-Mega, non-Shadow options? So the next best options would actually be Tide, and it's going to be Pheromosa and Volcarona. Now, these two are pretty much like I and I. They're super close together on the ER scale at level 30, so again, that's my recommendation right there. You only need to power them up to level 30. Your Shadow options for the Bug type category are actually pretty bad, so Pheromosa and Volcarona are going to be the reigning champs here. Now, the reason that I'm not recommending any other Bug type Pokemon is because your next best options in the non-Shadow, non-Mega category would be Genesect, Vicavolt, Volt and Yan Mega, but the difference here is that in order to get them to the same power potential as a level 30 Pheromosa or Volcarona, is that they would have to be at level 45. Again, huge ask, not really worth it in my opinion, just focus on these two if you really want to build some for the bug type category. Even then, bug types aren't utilized that often in Pokemon Go, so keep that in mind as well. Next up, we got the fighting type category, and I love going over this one every single year because there are always massive meta shakeups. So nowadays, Mega Blaziken is going to still be your best mega type option with counter and focus blast, no exclusive movesets there. So if you guys actually want to run a Mega Blaziken as a fighting type mega instead of a fire type mega, not having to, you know, give it Blast Burn, that could definitely be a play. Now, following that, your next best option, not even Shadow option, is going to be Terrakion at level 30. This thing, with Sacred Sword as the signature move set, is a monster. Like, because it got access to Double Kick, I think, like, not last year, maybe the year before that, this completely changed the game for Terrakion, guys. Like, Terrakion could also be run in the Master League's Bolts if you want to power up one to level 50. Also a possibility, but honestly, just having five or six of these things at level 30, that is going to be better than everything else in the meta. Like, your next best option would be Keldeo, a mythical Pokemon. Now, the funny thing about Keldeo, is that it has the exact same stats as Terrakion, but it doesn't have access to Double Kick as a fast move. So yeah, unfortunately for Keldeo, uh, the only thing that it's really good for is being second best at Terrakion because it doesn't have Double Kick. So take that for what you will. If you want to get some rarity, then uh, Keldeo would be your next best option. Now following that, we do have some Shadow options, which I'll talk about in the other video, but the next best option from there would be Lucario. Now unfortunately, compared to a level 30 Terrakion, Lucario would have to be powered up to level 45 to do the same amount of damage, but the biggest benefit here for Lucario is that it will also benefit from a Mega Evolution in the future. I guarantee Mega Lucario is going to be the top fighting type attacker Mega in the game, so definitely worth investing into a good IV Lucario. Now with that being said, we've definitely had a lot of events featured around Rayoli within the past year, so hopefully some of you guys did end up getting that shiny. If you didn't, definitely do some lucky trades for this bad boy. It is going to be totally worth it for the future. And then again, we do have some Shadow Pokemon to go over, but really none of them even hold a candle compared to regular Terrakion, so even when we talk about that in the other video, it won't matter that much. We got Rock type Pokemon up next, and there was a huge meta shakeup this past year. So, this one, uh, we're gonna spend some time on this one. I'm gonna have to explain this. So, first of all, your top two Mega Pokemon Mega Diancie and Mega Tyranitar. Mega Tyranitar will need an exclusive moveset for uh, its fast move. That's gonna be Smackdown. That's a Calm Day exclusive moveset. Now, uh, is it worth building? Absolutely. Level 50 Mega Tyranitar over Mega Diancie, and the reason I say that is because Mega Diancie is a mythical Pokemon, which means getting access to those extra large candy, that is going to be extremely difficult. Whereas compared to Tyranitar, that is much more accessible. Like at the very least, guys, you can just hold on to your Larvitar, do those for guaranteed extra large candy trades, and uh, you should be good to go. Now, minus the Mega Pokemon though, all right? Minus the Mega Pokemon, your next best options in the non-Mega, non-Shadow category would be Rhyperior with Rock Wrecker. I should say Smackdown plus Rock Wrecker. Rock Wrecker is going to be an exclusive Calm Day moveset. And Rampardos uh, with uh, Smackdown plus Rock Slide. Now, both of these, in order to be as good as their Shadow variants, because their Shadow variants got released during last October, they would have to be at level 45. Now, the only upside to Rhyperior is that you can run it in the Master League at level 50. So if you want to do that, totally on the table. Now, I'm not going to go over this one in intense detail, but basically Shadow Rhyperior and Shadow Rampardos are the equivalent of Mega Tyranitar and Mega Diancie at level 50. So keep that in mind. You could essentially have like a full team of Mega Tyranitar if you wanted to. Like it would just look like Mega Tyranitar plus 5 level 50 Shadow Rhyperior. That would be the equivalent right there. It's actually insane. Like, I don't even understand how it's that good. But yeah, the meta shakeup for the rock type category, man, huge game changer. Now, when it comes down to accessibility, though, Shadow Rhyhorn, which evolves into Shadow Rhyperior, and Shadow Craniados, which evolves into Shadow Rampardos, those Pokemon are pretty difficult to get from Rocket Battles. So I wouldn't bank on getting a whole bunch of these, let alone with good IVs. It's going to be pretty difficult to hunt them down. Therefore, like regular counterparts, uh, if you want to power up a Rhyperior to level like 35, for example, or Rampardo to level 30, level 35, that's definitely a good place to start, but just know that the end game should eventually be getting towards those shadows. Next up, let's talk about the ground type category. So 
let's go over our Mega and Primal options first. Primal Groudon, guys, Mudshot plus Precipice Blades, the signature moveset right there. Now, in my personal opinion, guys, Groudon is without a doubt one of the best Pokemon in the entire game, like top five for sure. Because again, you can use it as a Raid slash Gym Attacker in its regular form or its Primal form. You could use it in Master League. You could also use it for Rocket Battles. You ideally want to have the same moveset as well, so that just makes it even easier. But all around, man, Groudon, that is the MVP. Like, you cannot go wrong powering up a good IV Groudon. It's very hard to do that because no matter what you do, this thing is going to carry you through a lot of things in game. We do have one more option in the Mega category, and that's going to be for Mega Garchomp with Mudshot plus Earth Power. Earth Power is going to be a Calm Day exclusive moveset. Now, do you also want a level 50 if Mega Garchomp on top of a Groudon? The answer is yes. And the reason I say that is because Garchomp can also be used in the Master League as well. Not to mention you can also use it as a dual functionality Pokemon for Dragon type plus Ground types. And I guess we could even say like triple functionality because you also get Master League usage out of it. But yeah, all around Mega Garchomp is worth powering up. But just remember to keep in mind that when it comes down to the Ground type category, Primal Groudon is going to be the MVP. Now, unfortunately, we can't go over our Shadow options. Otherwise, that would be Shadow Garchomp and Shadow Excadrill. But our next best non Mega non Shadow option will be regular Groudon and regular Landorus Therian form, both at level 35. Now, unfortunately though, you are gonna need to have the signature movesets for both of these Pokemon, a Groudon Precipice Blades, and then recently we got access to Sand Seer Storm for Landorus in its Therian form. Now, once again, guys, the benefit here is that both of these Pokemon can be used in the Master League, so it is totally worth investing into these two if you wanna build it for the long run, because again, like any Master League usage out of it, that makes the Pokemon so much more worth it. I really do like talking about the Master League relevance as well, just because I know that a lot of these Pokemon will get outclassed in the future by possibly Shadow Variants, or maybe even just different Pokemon with different movesets, but you know, having dual functionality in the Master League keeps it relevant in the overall meta and as well as a Raid slash Gym attacker. Like, even if you, for example, got something better in the future, like a level 50 Landorus in its Therian form is gonna hold up, man. Like, no way in hell is that ever gonna be a bad Pokemon to have in your Raid team. Next up, let's move on over to our Ice type category. So, we're gonna go over two Mega Pokemon now that, like, yes, I would recommend powering them up to level 50 if you really just want to, but you don't even really have to. Like, level 40 would actually be fine for these two, and the reason that I say that is because the shadow and the regular options are actually better than these mega options. It's pretty rare that the megas aren't actually on the top of the list, but in the ice type category that just happens to be the case, at least until we get, uh, I think it's Zen form for Darmanitan, and then that's probably going to propel that to the top of the list. I think that might work similar to megas, but we don't really know for sure as of right now. That has still yet to be released. But basically when it comes into the mega forms, Mega Glalie and Mega Obama Snow are going to be my recommendations there. Um, again, like level 40 is fine for these Pokemon. They're mainly just going to be used as an additional support rule to kind of boost your surrounding Pokemon during raid battles. But outside of that, there's no other use for them. So yeah, like even level 35, if you want to just power up these Megas, that's perfectly fine. Now, what about our non-Mega, non-Shadow options? Well, first of all, our non-Mega options, including Shadows, are pretty good. So Shadow Mamoswine, Shadow Weavile are kind of the top of that list there. But the next best option will be Baxcalibur, which is a really, really rare Pokemon to get with Ice Fang plus Avalanche. No exclusive movesets, but compared to Shadow Mamoswine, it's like Shadow Mamoswine is level 30, Baxcalibur is level 40. Now, the upside here is that you can use Baxcalibur for Master League, so it does get dual functionality. Following that, Galarian Darmanitan would be next in terms of the Pokemon that you want to focus on, and this one, again, will get access to its Zen form in the future, which is going to make it really, really powerful, kind of like a Mega Form. So, Galarian Darmanitan, Baxcalibur, all recommendations that I would go with, and then we do have one more that is going to be Mamoswine, just regular Mamoswine at level 45, unfortunately, would be where my recommendation is. Now, the upside here for Mamoswine is that it will have dual functionality in the Master League, so there is definitely a reason to power this thing up to level 50 and really get it past that level 45 mark where it actually is going to be relevant in the Raid slash Gen meta. So for the Ice type category, it's always been a little bit weird to me just because our Shadows are the top of the list, our Megas are kind of at the bottom of the list, and then sandwiched in between both of those are like our regular Pokemon. So we got the Steel type category coming up next. This is very similar to the Psychic type category. There's only one good Pokemon in here, and that Pokemon is going to be Metagross with Meteor Mash. Now this will benefit from a Mega Evolution in the future. Pretty much the same thing that we talked about with Mewtwo earlier, like a Shadow Metagross at level 30 is the same power potential as a regular Metagross at level 45. So the upside here to regular Metagross though is that it will benefit from the Mega like we just talked about and it also has Master League relevance. So Metagross just powering up one of those things to level 50 with like really really good IVs, definitely worth it. Outside of that, I would hold on to your candy and extra large candy for the Shadow Forms because those are going to retain the top spot in the meta. 
and uh, that's probably what I would go with, like one regular Metagross and five Shadow Metagross. That's all you need. Same thing for Mewtwo, one regular Mewtwo, five Shadow Mewtwo. That's the play. Now following the Steel types, we got Fairy types coming up next, and we actually got a last minute change to this list with Enamorous Incarnate, which we're going to talk about. This is a Pokemon that only released during Valentine's Day, during like specific Elite Raid hours. It was a big mess, but some people probably got it, and if you did end up getting it, well, you're going to find out that it was totally worth it. Before we get into Enamorous Incarnate, though, let's talk about Mega Gardevoir, because that's going to be your best Mega type option for the Fairy type category. Mega Gardevoir is mainly just going to be for the Raid slash Gym meta, but Charm plus Dazzling Gleam, guys, can't go wrong with this thing. It's probably going to retain its number one spot for, I think, forever. I don't think there's anything else that we're really waiting for. So yeah, Mega Gardevoir, level 50, do strongly recommend. Now, what about our non-Shadow, non-Mega options, right? So we just talked about this. Enamorous Incarnate form with Fairy Wind plus Dazzling Gleam is actually your best option to go with. Level 30, that's all you need. I mean, ideally, Mega Gardevoir plus uh, five of these, you're good to go. Now, Xerneas is going to be our next option at level 35. This does actually benefit from Master League relevance, though, so it is worth getting this bad boy up to level 50, but you will need to get the exclusive, or signature moveset, I should say, Geomancy, plus Moonblast. That's going to be non-exclusive right there, but that's what you need for your Xerneas. Xerneas was, like, not even relevant for the longest time. We had talked about Xerneas potentially getting Geomancy and that being a Fairy-type fast move, and thankfully, that is exactly what happened. If it wasn't for this guy, Xerneas wouldn't even be on this list, but because it did get access to that moveset, well, Xerneas is going to be one of your top fairy type attackers to go with now. For a couple years, too, it was mainly just Togekiss and Gardevoir on this list, and now we actually have two better options in the legendary category, which I think is super cool. That being said, though, Togekiss and Gardevoir still do make this list. Unfortunately, though, instead of level 30 now, in order for it to be on the same power potential as like an Enamorous Incarnate or Shadow Gardevoir, Togekiss would have to be at level 40. But Togekiss also does benefit from Master League relevance, so dual functionality again right there. And then finally, we do have regular Gardevoir with Charm and Dazzling Gleam. Um, this Pokemon, again, doesn't have Master League relevance, but with the Mega Form, it does make it worth it. Now, regular Gardevoir is still worth powering up, again, for accessibility reasons, very similar to Togekiss. So when it comes down to Togekiss or Gardevoir, whichever one you like better, or if you like both of them, you could power up both of them to about level 40. That's going to be the same power potential as a level 30 Enamorous, and then you're good to go. So keep that all in mind, guys. Let me know if you have any questions, but now we have to go over our final category, which is going to be for Dragon-type Pokemon, and the amount of dual functionality Pokemon in this category is actually insane and we just recently got access to the origin forms for both Dialga as well as Palkia. And yes, there were some game-breaking meta changes within those two Pokemon. So first of all, what is the best mega type option to go with in the dragon type category? So the other options, or sorry, the other categories, we went over like maybe one or two megas, right? Well, for the dragon type category, we have three. Now we could potentially have four, but I'm just going to go with three because the fourth one isn't really that great. That's going to be Megalodios, by the way. The first three, or the top three, I should say. The top dog, Mega Rayquaza, Dragon Tail Outrage, that is the best of the best. You cannot get better than that Pokemon. The second best option, which is not a huge difference here, it's about four points lower, that's gonna be Mega Garchomp with Dragon Tail plus Outrage. Again, no exclusive movesets so far. So everything is uh, very attainable here. Now, finally, our third best option is about, you know, nine points, maybe eight-ish points uh, lower for Mega Rayquaza. That's going to be Mega Salamence with Dragon Tail plus Outrage. Now, unfortunately for Mega Salamence, Outrage is a Calm Day exclusive moveset. So for this one specifically, you will need an Elite Charge TM. So if I had to pick between the three guys, you know, the first two don't need Elite Charge TMs and they're more powerful, go with those options. If you already have a Mega Salamence built, then, you know, you're good to go as well. And when it comes down to our non-Mega and non shadow options, what do we have on the table here, right? So again, comparing to our shadow options at level 30, our next best option would actually be Palkia in its origin form, Dragon Tail plus the exclusive or signature move Spatial Rend, and that is as well at level 30. So, you know, before I made this video, these two Pokemon had not been released, and I recently just made the adjustment to factor them in, and I was really surprised to see that Palkia in its origin form is actually the best non-Mega non-Shadow Pokemon in the game right now. Like, it's actually really good in the Master League too, I think it's actually number one in the Master League right now which is insane. So, you know, just by itself though, level 30 Palkia, that's all you need. Now what about Dialga Origin? Is it on the same level as Palkia? Well, it's it's uh, pretty close. Uh, Dialga in Origin form, that's going to be level 35 compared to the Shadow counterparts at the level 30 baseline. This does actually benefit from Master League relevance again though, so, you know, some of these levels, if you're just going to build like one off of them, then it doesn't really matter all that much. Like level 30, level 35 recommendations, those are out the window if you're going to power them up to level 50, which again, like I do recommend because they're dual functionality Pokemon. 
you power up one, get to level 50, you could use that as a Dragon type attacker and a Master League Pokemon. And if you power up like six different ones, well, you're good to go. And trust me, there's going to be enough on here that you could totally power up six different Pokemon. They're all going to have Master League relevance, and they're all going to be really good for the Raid slash Gym meta. I really was not expecting Palkia and Dialga Origin forms to be this much better than their regular counterparts, but if we look at the regular counterparts, guys, regular Palkia, for the same power potential, by the way, needs to be at level 45 compared to a level 30 Palkia Origin form. For Dialga, that's level 50 compared to a level 35 Dialga Origin form. Big difference. Now, does that mean that you shouldn't use regular Palkia or regular Dialga in the Master League anymore because of their uh, origin counterparts? Well, no, not necessarily. Uh, you could still use both of them in the Master League. They are both, you know, top ranking Pokemon still. I don't know if that is going to stay the same for the foreseeable future, but I would bet that at least for 2024, I can uh, say that these two are still going to hold up. Now, that being said, though, if you have to pick between the two, definitely go with the origin forms anytime you can. Now, unfortunately, though, for Dialga, I forgot to mention this, it does need to have the exclusive or signature moveset, Roar of Time. These movesets were very difficult to get during the Sinnoh Tour, so if you were able to get extras, I seriously recommend saving them and do not transfer them. Like, for any reason, guys, save those for lucky trades because, you know, these also benefit from adventure effects. I actually did a separate video going over adventure effects. I'm going to leave the link to that in the top right-hand corner right now, as well as in the description down below. But uh, these two are just... Yeah, some of the best Pokemon you can get in the entire game, not only for their meta relevance, but also for the adventure effects. I mean, we could even say like quad functionality for these two, like they're so freaking good, man. So the next best option is going to be Rayquaza. We talked about this one earlier with Dragon Tail and Outrage, or you could also run Breaking Swipe as well if you want to run it for PvP, that's perfectly fine. Now, when it comes down to my recommendation for Rayquaza, I would say level 40, but it also does benefit from Master League relevance. So you could totally power this one up to level 50 and then get a whole lot of use out of it. Now, following that, we have regular Salamence. And again, we talked about Mega Salamence here. It's like out of the three top Megas, it's the lowest on the list. And it's kind of similar here for its regular counterpart. I feel like Mega Salamence, or sorry, regular Salamence and regular Garchomp are along the same lines. Uh, the only downside here is that you can't really use Salamence for the Master League. So I can't really recommend this one as much. Like if you already built a Mega Salamence or just a regular Salamence, I should say, then that's fine. Like, don't worry about that too much. You can still use it as a Dragon type attacker. But in terms of building one and you haven't built one yet, it. I wouldn't really recommend it all that much. Like you do have better options out there. That being said though, I can't say the same thing for Garchomp because I do strongly recommend building one of these. We talked about this earlier on in the ground type category, but again, guys, like level 45, it does have Master League functionality. So dual functionality right there for this Pokemon, and not to mention maybe even like triple functionality with the Mega Form as well. It's definitely worth building a level 50 Garchomp. You will get a ton of use out of that, either running it as a ground type attacker or as a dragon type attacker or as a Mega Ground or Mega Dragon type attacker Master League. You can tell there's a whole bunch of stuff here with this Pokemon. Pokemon. The next Pokemon is going to be Zekrom. So Zekrom we talked about earlier in the electric type category. This Pokemon also has relevance in the dragon type category. You ideally want to run Dragon Breath plus Outrage. And uh, for this recommendation, level 45. But again, Master League relevance, so you're ideally going to want to get it to level 50 at some point. Now our next Pokemon is going to be a classic, the Gen 1 pseudo-legendary Dragonite. So Dragonite, you know, the MVP holds a special place in most of our hearts. Now surprisingly, Dragonite has actually held up really well throughout the years. For the Raid Slash Gym meta, you want to have Dragon Tail plus Outrage, but for the PvP meta, you ideally want to have Dragon Tail plus Dragon Claw and Super Power, I believe. Now, you could also have Dragon Breath as well. It does have access to that moveset. That's a lot more fun to use, in my opinion. Now, of course, with that being said, a level 50 Dragonite is not going to hold a candle to a level 35 Palkia Origin form in the Raid Slash Gym meta. But again, Dragonite benefits from dual functionality, Master League relevance, as well as Raid Slash Gym meta relevance. Like, a level 50 Dragonite is still going to be a good Dragon type attacker. Could you have better options out there? Yes, but does it mean that it's a bad option to use? Absolutely not. I'm not gonna lie, being almost eight years into this game and Dragonite still holding onto its relevance back from 2016 is impressive. Obviously, there's had a lot of moveset changes since then, but it's still really cool to see that Dragonite is still one of the best Pokemon to power up in the game. Now, our next Pokemon is another one that also benefited from a different category, and that is gonna be Reshiram. Ideally, for the Dragon type category, though, you wanna have Dragon Breath plus Draco Meteor, and very similar to the others. Dual functionality in the Master League as well. Um, would you wanna use it as a dragon type or a fire type i'd probably prefer to use it as a fire type attacker i just feel like it's way more useful that way but you could totally run it as both like you could have fusion flare as one move set give it the second move set and then you could have draco meteor interchange between the fast moves and now you have a functional dragon type as well as a functional fire type pokemon and you can use it in master league too now finally your last pokemon here barely made the cut and that's going to be haxorus at level 50 as well you ideally want to have a Dragon Tail plus Breaking Swipe. Breaking Swipe is going to be an exclusive Calm Day moveset. Hopefully some of you guys were able to get some uh, during the Calm Day, though. It wasn't that long ago. Now, Haxorus was really good with Breaking Swipe before the nerf. 
post nerf, it's not nearly as good. So once again, Haxorus barely made the cut here. Like you could literally go with any of the other options I mentioned, Palkia origin form, Dialga origin form, either of the regular forms, Rayquaza, Salamence, Garchomp, Zekrom, Reshiram, Dragonite. You have all those other options above Haxorus and I would go with any of them, but hey, if Haxorus is your favorite Pokemon or you really like the shiny, like the shiny looks super cool, then go with it. It's fine. Like, you know, building level 50 Haxorus, that's okay. Now we do have one more Pokemon I'm about to go over and some of you guys did get upset that I didn't actually include this in last year's video, but that Pokemon is going to be Melmetal. It's more of a bonus Pokemon on this list as it doesn't benefit from Stab, but it's also a just super good Pokemon to use in Pokemon Go in general. So basically the ideal moveset you want to have for it is going to be Thundershock plus Superpower and then Double Iron Bash. Double Iron Bash is going to be an exclusive moveset. It was like a research exclusive moveset, but you could Elite Team to get it. Now this Pokemon is really good, not only for Master League, but also for Team Go Rocket Battles. The combination moveset of Thundershot plus Super Power and Double Iron Bash is very, very spammy. So if you guys don't actually have a good Pokemon to use for Team Go Rocket Battles, Melmetal is a really, really good one to go with. And it's a pretty accessible Pokemon at that because all you need to do is transfer your Pokemon to either Pokemon Home or to Pokemon Let's Go, and then you're gonna get a Melton Box. You could do this every three days, and then you basically get like a Melton Incense for like the next hour, which is awesome. Not to mention the extra large candy because it's a mythical Pokemon is gonna be guaranteed for every single one of those catches. So when it comes down to building a level 50 Melmetal, it is actually extremely accessible and it's super relevant. So yeah, bonus recommendation right there, you know, take it for what it is, but guys, that is the entire list of the best Pokemon to power up in the game. Now, for those of you guys who made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it if you still want to check out some more awesome content i'm going to recommend these two videos right here but before you go don't forget to smash that like button subscribe and i'll see you all real soon in the next one